RNA and protein synthesis. Um, this topic is really important because um, protein synthesis is controlled by the genes in your body. So whether those genes are turned on or off make your skin cells different from your hair cells and different from your eye cells. Um, just like DNA, RNA is a nucleic acid. So DNA and RNA are both nucleic acids and you see that in their name. The NA in both DNA and RNA stands for nucleic acid. But there are some differences between DNA and RNA. And we're going to look at these, uh, th those differences between DNA and RNA in this table. So DNA and RNA both have a different sugar in their structure. So DNA has the sugar deoxyribose. You see DNA starts with a D, so does deoxyribose. And RNA has the sugar ribose. Ribose starts with an R, just like RNA starts with an R. Um, their nitrogen bases also differ. DNA has A's, T's, C's, and G's. Um, RNA has some of the same bases, but instead of a T, it has a U. So it has A's, U's, C's, and G's. Also, DNA is double-stranded, so it looks like a ladder, whereas RNA is single-stranded. It looks like a ladder that has been chopped in half. So that would be RNA here. Um, also, DNA and RNA differ in their location in the cell. DNA is located in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells, while RNA is located anywhere inside of a cell. So it can be in the nucleus or outside in the cytoplasm. Um, now let's zoom in at the structure of RNA. Um, RNA and DNA look a lot the same because they're both nucleic acids. Um, they're made up of a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base. So the purple balls are phosphate molecules. They're connected to the ribose sugar, because remember RNA has a ribose, R and R, and then these nitrogen bases. Remember, RNA can have any of four nitrogen bases, A's, U's, C's, or G's. So what makes our different molecules of RNA different is they have different nitrogen bases here. There are three types of RNA that you need to know about. Um, the first is messenger RNA. So we abbreviate messenger RNA as mRNA. Messenger RNA is a copy of one protein recipe from DNA. Now, DNA has all the recipes for all the proteins your body ever needs, needs to make, like keratin, insulin, hemoglobin, and whatnot. So it has all those recipes. Um, but as you can think of, if you borrowed or you wanted to get a recipe from a friend, you wouldn't copy their entire recipe book. You would only copy one of those recipes. Um, and you can think of mRNA kind of like that one recipe that you would copy. Um, our next type of RNA is ribosomal RNA. And ribosomal RNA is what our ribosomes are made of. So from far away, ribosomes look like these small dots right here. But if you actually zoom into a ribosome, it looks like a strand of spaghetti that's been squished together. And that strand is made of ribosomal RNA, um, abbreviated rRNA. Our next type of RNA is transfer RNA, and we abbreviate it tRNA. And as you can see, the name has something to do with transferring or transporting things. Um, and transfer RNA kind of looks like a T if you're creative. Um, it's this purple structure right here. Okay, looks sort of like a T. And the job of transfer RNA is to carry amino acids to the ribosome. So the transfer RNA hooks onto or binds with amino acids, and that's represented by our brick-shaped or red shape right here. And they deliver them to the ribosome. So if this represents our ribosome, our tRNA would deliver it to the ribosome. And I tell students that transfer RNA is kind of like a delivery truck. A uh, truck starts with, with a T, transfer RNA also starts with a T. tRNA, truck RNA, sort of the same thing. They deliver amino acids. Now let's look at the steps of protein synthesis. Um, protein synthesis has two steps, transcription and translation. Um, Transcription is the process of copying that mRNA recipe, that one recipe that we need, from DNA. Um, so we're making mRNA during transcription. Now, since DNA stays inside the nucleus, you have to go to where we keep the DNA in order to copy it. For example, if you were to, and I hope you wouldn't do this, but copy somebody's homework, and they keep their homework in their locker, you'd have to go to their locker to copy the homework. So since DNA is kept in the nucleus, um, when we want to copy our DNA into mRNA, we have to go to the nucleus to do that. Um, so it happens in the nucleus. Now this is a rough sketch of what transcription looks like. This green region represents our nucleus, and the red represents the DNA. As you can see, the, uh, the DNA is unzipping, and we're making our mRNA copy of just one portion of the DNA. Um, after transcription happens, our mRNA is going to leave the nucleus and attach to a ribosome. And during translation, we link amino acids together. Now amino acids are represented by these orange brick shapes right here. Um, and when we link amino acids together, we form proteins. Um, and you can think of a protein like a bead of pearls 
or a strand of pearls. So the pearl necklace is the protein, but each individual pearl is an amino acid. Um, and this whole process of translation of linking our amino acids together happens on a ribosome. Now we're going to zoom in or take a closer look at uh, both transcription and translation now. All right, like I said on the previous slide, transcription is the process of making mRNA from protein. So remember our DNA is, or sorry, making mRNA from DNA. Um, our DNA is kept inside of our nucleus, so this green region represents our nucleus. The nucleus has a lot of pores through which some molecules can exit or enter the nucleus. Um, our DNA is a very large molecule, and that's represented by the red right here. So the first thing you have to do if you want to copy DNA or make an mRNA copy of the DNA is you have to unzip it. So you're breaking those hydrogen bonds between um, the nitrogen bases in DNA. So our DNA has been unzipped, as you can see, we've labeled our DNA here. And remember, DNA has T's and not U's, so that's one way to distinguish this DNA from this mRNA we're making. So we've unzipped our strands of DNA, and we only copy one of the strands into mRNA. So we copy a portion of it into mRNA. As you can see, we started with the G, C, A, G, T, T, A, A in our DNA. Now you want to put the letters that match in mRNA, but mRNA is a type of RNA. And RNA doesn't have U's, but it has, or it doesn't have T's, instead it has U's. So wherever you have a G, you still put a C, but whenever you would normally put a T, if you were making DNA, instead you put a U, since it's RNA. So G goes with C, C goes with G, A goes with U, G goes with C, T goes with A, T goes with A, and then we didn't copy the rest of um, our DNA because that's not part of the protein we want to make. This is the only portion we want to make. Now, our mRNA is, um, has been made and our process of transcription is completed. Later, our mRNA is going to leave through this little pore, or any of the pores on the nucleus, and attach to the ribosome. And that initiates translation. Alright, so here's translation. Our mRNA has left the nucleus. As you can see, our DNA has zipped back up and it stays uh, packed up in our nucleus. Our mRNA has left the nucleus through one of those pores and attaches to a ribosome. And just remember, the ribosome is made of rRNA. So we have our mRNA here, and now what happens is our tRNA, these green structures right here, are going to come deliver amino acids that correspond with um, our mRNA. Now, we're going to take our, um, our tRNAs and attach them to our mRNA. Now, it turns out every three letters on our mRNA is called a codon. So as you can see, CGU is a codon, and then we have CAA as a codon. So the first thing we have to do is figure out which tRNA is going to match. So let's find the letters that match in tRNA. So we have a CGU. Now C would want to match with a G. G matches with C, and U matches with A. So we need a GCA. So that would be this tRNA molecule right here. So that tRNA molecule would come, oops, that's not a very good drawing would come attached to the mRNA molecule and deliver an amino acid. All right, if you actually want to figure out which amino acid it delivers, you just look on your codon chart. Um, and I don't have a codon chart handy, but I'll show you that in um, our practice problems at the end. Um, so we look up these three letters on our codon chart, and that would tell us what amino acid, and I'm going to abbreviate that amino A, goes right here. Okay, And then our next tRNA molecule would come and deliver our amino acid to this portion of our mRNA. So we have CAA, so we, that would match with GUU, so that would be this tRNA molecule. And it would deliver another amino acid. And then these amino acids would link together with a special bond called a peptide bond. So peptide bonds link together our amino acids. All right, so that's the process of translation. Finally, we're going to do some practice problems. So I'm going to grab a codon chart, and then we're going to use that codon chart to help us do these practice problems. So this is a codon chart. Um, you might see one that actually 
makes you figure out the codons on your own and you have to use a little um, process um, that if you need help with, you can ask me later. Um, or you can have the other side that actually gives you each codon and individually lists out the amino acids. If I were you, I would learn how to use this side so that you know how to use any codon chart they ever will give you because this is the hardest one. Um, so the first problem says, what amino acid sequence matches this mRNA? Okay, so the codon chart gives us amino acids. Now, the issue is um, when you're given uh, a sequence of DNA, you can't go straight to your codon chart because codons are only found on mRNA. So you can think of this as a chart where you look up mRNA. So if they don't give you mRNA, you have to look up something else. But as you see in this problem, they gave us mRNA. They gave us mRNA AUG, GAA. So let's look up our mRNA since it's already mRNA. Our first letters are AUG. So we find our A on the first side, U is our second letter, and then we'll look up our third letter over here. So we start with A and U. We line up those two columns. That means our answer is somewhere in this box. Our last letter is G. So we look up the row G that matches, and that is methionine. I'm going to abbreviate it N E T. Our second codon is GAA. So we look up, G is our first um, letter. Then we have A, so that means we're somewhere in this box. And then we find our last one, A. So that's a glutamate. All right, so our amino acid sequence is methionine and glutamate. And as just a reminder, the bond that attaches these two amino acids together is a peptide bond. All right, our second question says, what amino acid sequence matches this DNA? So we have TTT, AAA. And as a reminder, you can, only use a, um, you can only use mRNA sequences on this codon chart. So we cannot use DNA on this chart. So you might say, what do we do then? Um, so instead, we change our DNA into mRNA first, and then we look it up on our codon chart. So let's find out which letters match for mRNA. So remember, we said in previous videos that A always hooks with T, C always hooks with G. So our T's would um, be A's in mRNA. And then, remember, in RNA we have U's instead of T's. So right here we would have U's. If this was DNA, we would have TTT. But instead we have UUU. So our mRNA sequence is AAA, UUU. Now you're going to look up on your codon chart those um, pairs of letters. So we have AAA. We start with A. Our second um, letter is A. So that means we're somewhere in this box. That's where the two A's line up. And our last letter is A. So that is, corresponds with lysine. And our um, next three are U, U, U. So we have U, U, and U. So those line up for phenylalanine. All right, our next problem says, what amino acid sequence matches this tRNA? And again, we can only use mRNA on this chart, but they gave us tRNA. So we have to switch it to mRNA. So what C would normally go with? G. G goes with C. C goes with G. A goes with U. U goes with A, and G goes with C. All right, now we can use that mRNA on our codon chart. So G, C, G, G is our first letter, C is our second letter. We line up those two letters into this box, and that's alanine. Well, forgot to show you the last one. G, C, G. This entire box says alanine, um, alanine but if you line it up, that's alanine. And then the next three say U, A, C. So we start with U. Our second one is A. We line up those two letters into this box. And then we find our third letter. Move over to that row. That's tyrosine. All right. And then our last example says what amino acid sequence matches this mRNA? So we have A, G, A, 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 C. You need to think, do, you, we, need, do we need to change this into something else to use our codon chart? But they gave us mRNA. That's easy. We don't have to change our letters. So our mRNA first three letters are A, G, A. So if we look up A, G, A, that is arginine. And the next three letters are A, A, C. If we line those up, we get asparagine. And that's how you do practice for protein synthesis.